What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another reaction. So today we are going to be reacting to Game Theory's latest FNAF theory video. This is quite exciting, I think. Um, obviously, we, we've just had like the 10 year anniversary stuff. So we've had like five laps at Freddy's. Don't know why I started with that one. We had Into the Pit. We had Secret of the Mimic. And, uh, and I'm really excited to see what this theory is going to be about specifically. I'm, I'm sure it's going to touch on Secret of the Mimic quite a bit because there's a little bit with um, with Funky Tom, as you may put it. But um, I, I, if you don't know who Funky Tom is, it's uh, it's a name that people came up with when the Mimic, the Secret of the Mimic was announced. The character people are calling it Funky Tom. It was actually someone in my Discord server who came up with the name. So congrats, <laughs> congrats, congrats for getting it widespread. Anyway, so I'm looking at this thumbnail and it's pointing at a paper pal and I have a feeling I already know what this theory is gonna be. It's gonna be the theory that one of the paper pals is Funky Tom. I, I'm gonna keep using Funky Tom because we don't know the name, but it, I'm, pretty, I'm sure it's the mimic. Um, but I, I think that character is probably that paper pal and then the other two paper pals are Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie. I think that makes a lot of sense. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see what Tom says. Let's get straight into it. <laughs> Take a look at this footage from FNAF 2. Seems normal enough, right? But what if I told you that the mimic is in this video? No, I'm not lying to you. And no, uh, I've not doctored <laughs> the footage. It's the paper, me. pal. The mimic is here. They have been here since the very beginning. Give up? Well, if you look very closely, you'll find that the mimic is this guy right here. Does he actually appear in the office? I've never Hello, seen that Internet. before. Welcome to Game Theory, the never show that, that cannot if that's believe a real thing. it has been 10 whole years of FNAF. Feels like just yesterday I was watching Markiplier scream at this tiny unknown yeah. indie game and now yeah. it's an indie horror empire full of games, movies, books... Feels like yesterday I was watching the first the game theory. Can handle. Ten years is a big deal. Believe me, we would know. And so to celebrate, Scott pulled out all the stops. We yeah. got an anniversary week full of fanverse games, demos, books, movie teasers, and of course the crown jewel that was Into the Pit. Though while it is that a crown game jewel. offers a lot so in good. the way of theorising, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Okay. Don't worry, that video is coming. I just need a little more time. So okay, make sure good, you're okay. subscribed so you don't miss that video when it drops. I cannot wait for that video. A special theorist surprise in store. Hint, hint. But for this episode, Ooh. instead of talking about the biggest Who release of the week, I wanted to talk about the biggest surprise. You see, we knew about every release that was happening during this anniversary week ahead of time. That was except for one. Steel Wool had a mystery announcement yes. slot. And a yes. lot of us just assumed it was going to be DLC for Help Wanted 2, but that's not what we True. got. Instead, Steel Wool completely sideswiped us by revealing a 40 second teaser, not for DLC, but for a brand new We know there's also gonna be another game after this as well, which is carpet. mad. The camera tilts up to reveal a jack-in-the-box playing music. The music yeah. stops, the box opens, and we hear a laugh as a clown mask peeks out from the box. The film reel we're watching begins to burn up, revealing 1979. the date 1979. Yeah. Finally, we see a title card appear from the darkness secret, secret of, of the mimic. mimic the internet <laughs> lost their collective minds yeah, over this yeah. not only were we getting a game exploring the character that was a complete mystery when it appeared at the end of ruin unless you happen to read the books but it was also going to be a prequel set before any yeah. other FNAF yeah yeah prequel is insane man. about the origins of freddy's ever since we got the fred bear singing show still has been wanting to do it and in 2025 it looks like we're gonna see if we were right but you know what i'm I'm not willing to wait that long. Call me impatient, but when you take a closer look, this 40 second teaser has actually told us a lot more than you'd initially think. Okay. This teaser confirms that we were right that the mimic is from the earliest days in Fazbear Entertainment's yeah. history. But it also oh, yeah, suggests absolutely. that the mimic's first in the appearance books. wasn't in ruin, nor was it security breach, nor was it help wanted. No, we are being shown oh, right, that the mimic has yeah. actually been hiding in plain sight since the very beginning. The pieces were in place for us to figure it out. We just weren't able to follow the bread. I don't know about that. Should I, I say paper trail to realize sooner. So wind up that music box, friends, because when it opens, we'll be diving in head first to see what secrets the mimic has been hiding. And in doing so, I believe we may finally be able to resolve one of the biggest conflicts currently facing the FNAF timeline. A wound first inflicted on me. Oh yeah, today's gonna be a big one. So let's Ooh. get into it. The first thing okay. we're gonna talk about is the design okay. of 
Funky Tom over here. Jokey fan name aside, given the title of this game, it feels pretty unlikely that this is supposed to be anything other than the Mimic. But he's not the disheveled Endo we saw in Ruin. Now he's wearing a white mask with exaggerated eyelashes. People have been saying it looks like the right puppet as well, nose. <sighs> I which I kind of see. The childhood trauma rushing back. It also <laughs> pops out of a Jack in the Box. So clearly, Steel Wool are going for a clown aesthetic with this newest version of the Mimic. Or is yeah. it the oldest version? This new old look does tie into our previous theories about the origins of Fazbear Entertainment. In that video, we discussed this poster from Help Wanted 2. Yeah. A poster with a circus tent and the date 1970 on it. That, along with the mascot costumes in the ruined basement, glitch traps design, official artwork of traditional mascot costumes, and references throughout the books, all seem... And the fact that Steel Wool have been wanting to make a, a FNAF Origins game in so long, and I feel like doing this Secret of the Mimic thing where we go all the way back to 1979, which is way before anything else we've seen in the franchise so far, going back to 1979, that is, that is a very good place to start uh, if that is the origin of the Mimic. And I, I would really like to see where this game is going to go, especially if it has that carnival theme with like Full Fest and all of these like mascot costumes and stuff. It's really, really interesting to see and uh, I cannot wait to see what's in store for us. To be telling us that Fazbear Entertainment didn't start with the creation of Fredbear's family diner, but as a traveling mm. circus. Instead of the animatronics yeah. or Springlock suits I would that agree we with know that. and love today, this circus used more traditional rudimentary <sighs> mascot costumes. They were still the same characters, Freddy, Bonnie and Chica, but played by human performers. I don't so know about one Chica. Exception. We ended like up a bit separate, suggesting that the Mimic but. was also part of that same Fazbear circus. It shares design similarities with Sunny Moon, sense. a it jester who was associated with the carousel from the Full Fest circus. A carousel that we watch burn. Repeatedly in Help Wanted 2, we see the festival burn down, both in the carousel level yeah. and in the Fazablast level. And what else do we know is burnt? The Mimic. In the first epilogue of Tales from the Pizzaplex, when the Mimic arrives, it is I loved that described theory, by the way. as it was really good. burnt. Thus, it seems like the Mimic has been been here since that full fest in the 70s. You might think yeah. I was celebrating this since fact. Since the full fest fire, My first yeah. theory was right. Let's go! But then, the worry began to sink in. It always feels a bit <laughs> wrong when a prequel introduces a new character. Plus, this franchise never gets rid of characters. Yeah. We've had 28 versions of Freddy, 19 versions of Bonnie, and we even got 11 versions of Volume. I'm sure we have a lot more than that as well that, that you've So missed. then, I tried to awkwardly insert the mimic into the previous lore. I mean, retcon much? Except, yeah. what if I told you we have seen this clown before? Somewhere you okay. never suspect. FNAF 2. I am of course talking about the characters I've been teasing since the start of the episode. The Paper Pals. No, I yeah. wasn't joking. These guys really are the key to everything. If you <laughs> don't know who I'm talking about, the Paper Pals are these simple characters made from paper plates that have been hanging out on the walls of pizzerias ever since they're introduction. Yeah. To this day, we've never really given them much thought. They never seem to be that yeah. important, but their continued existence in the franchise has always struck me as unusual. In fact, the only reason I was reminded of them yeah, and they're, and they're going to be a PAX as well. Playthrough Good of point. Into the Pit, and wouldn't you know it, they are once again just hanging out. For them to keep showing up, especially in these modern titles, they have to be important. And I think that we... So, when we did our playthrough of Into the Pit um, on Psychic's channel, I, I swear there were four paper pals, I swear. And I kept saying like, why are there four? But nobody was like picking up on what I was saying. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I, I just, I found that weird if that is a thing. I don't know if anybody else has picked up on that. But uh, either way, yes, three, three paper pals. One of them looks like Freddy, one of them looks like Bonnie. And then the other one has always been like a, a weird, like who, who is this? You know, cause it doesn't, it doesn't really necessarily look entirely like anyone. Um, people have been saying either Balloon Boy or the Puppet for a long time. I, I don't know why it would be the Puppet, because, you know, we have a blue and red design. But then again, I don't know why it would be Balloon Boy, because Balloon Boy isn't that important. And it doesn't really look like Balloon Boy apart from the blue and the red. So it, it is a bit of a weird debate. And then, yeah, m maybe it is someone else. And maybe it's supposed to represent the first three characters of the franchise of Freddy's and... Um, and that would be that that clown mimic, Funky Tom guy, Fred Bear, and Spring Bonnie. I, I feel like that could be a good way to put it. Um, 
So I don't know, let's continue with what Tom's saying. I don't want to interrupt too much because I want to get into the actual theory part, but that's interesting, yeah. I think the weird clown mimic is the piece that ties them all together. Originally, there were three of these guys. A Freddy pal, a Bonnie pal, and this thing. According yeah. to the game files, he's just called Paper Buddy. And of the three, oh, he's really? definitely the weird one. In FNAF 2, he could just disappear from the wall and suddenly appear in your office. He didn't do really? anything. He was just there now. Even his design... Sorry, I didn't know that. It's been place. 10 years, the I didn't know that. The are clearly characters we know. Freddy and Bonnie, duh. But yeah. this guy doesn't have any recognizable features. He's got red arms, blue legs, a big smile, and a big nose. It's just so weird. In a series full of animal characters, why have this generic humanoid looking thing? Naturally, the only logical explanation we had at the time was that this had to be Balloon Boy. He was one of the, the red few and blue, humanoid yeah. characters we knew about by FNAF 2, and he wears a red and blue outfit. But now that I'm looking back, I'm not so sure anymore. For Bonnie and Freddy, we aren't just relying relying on the colors to show us who they are. They have extra design details that connect them to their iconic characters. Bow ties, hats, ears, yeah. that sort of thing. If this paper buddy was supposed to be Balloon Boy, why not give him some of his iconic attire? Like the- But he has like stripes on his arms and stuff. But yeah, 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 absolutely. A balloon, the thing he is literally known for. Yeah, what that's a good point. What this implies to me is that paper buddy is actually supposed to be someone else. Someone with a much simpler design. And the answer of who becomes extremely obvious when you take a look at their appearance in FNAF World. That's right, not only were these guys considered important enough to be playable characters in one of the weirdest entries in this series, but Scott also used it to give us a vital clue about who this guy was supposed to be. And it's all because of one teeny tiny design change. We've gone over Paper Buddy's design already. The red arms, blue legs, buttons, okay. big smile, happy eyes, yeah. big nose. All of that is the same in FNAF World. Except for his the nose. Red nose. It's still as big as before. Good and it's point. In the same place. But the color is now different. It's been changed to red. And a red nose means one clown. Thing, clowns. What we're seeing wow. is everybody's design matching That's exactly a good catch. with the iconic design of clowns. And therefore, also matches what we've seen from the mimic in this latest. Wow. Time. Now, I recognize that this feels like a stretch. This is all down to interpretation and could be taken a number of different ways. Believe me, I was honestly unsure of all of this too. That was until I found this. The final clue that absolutely sealed the deal for me that Paper Buddy is the Mimic. Take a look at the attacks the Paper Pals have in FNAF World. Oh, the no. first two are Prize Ball mimic two ball. and Mystery Box 2. Both generic attacks that would make mystery, sense any mystery box in any <laughs> pizzeria. But the third and final attack is called something very specific. Mimic. Ah, mimic oh, damn it. Mimics the last attack. Damn it! God damn it! I would not believe it when I saw this. Of all of the games, it was FNAF World showing us that the Paper Pals were specifically able to mimic others. The third Paper Pal from FNAF 2. God's Paper sake, Scott Cawthon. a deeper version of the new clown mimic that we saw in the teaser. Okay. In my previous theory, I mentioned how FNAF 2 isn't a revamp of the old franchise, but a callback to the circus origins of the franchise. The red-cheeked toy animatronics were called calling back to the original costumes worn at the circus. Yeah. You have the carousel calling back to the carousel from Fortress yeah, that we got exactly. in not wanted to. And now we have Paper Buddy. Calling okay. back to the clown mimic that was present at that same circus. I like how it this is coming together. It together so neatly. Yeah. It could also explain the clown mask in things like Sister Location, the one that would later go on to become Ennard. Why is that mask in such a position of prominence? Because it was the third member of that original circus trio. Someone who had been there since the beginning. Although, so he thinks Ennard, the Ennard mask. While Paper Buddy being the mimic and appearing in FNAF 2 makes sense, him being grouped with Freddy and Bonnie feels a bit odd, right? Even for the early days of the franchise, a clown isn't the I will say that doesn't like Ennard. With Freddy and Bonnie. Chica, right? I'd have understood. The Paper Maybe even Foxy. But this guy is just so random. If you've followed us the for face, a while, I mean. you'll know that we are obsessed with these kinds of details. The yeah. grouping of animatronics through merchandise 
device or decor can often tell us a lot about the history of the franchise. We felt like Foxy had to come later because he had a separate stage to the other three. It felt like Chica wasn't originally part of the group either because, because of she sister had location. her own party world spin yeah. during Sister Location. And in Ruin, we figured out that Sun and Moon came much earlier because they were getting collectibles alongside OG characters, while newcomers like Roxy and Monty weren't. So yeah. placing yeah. the Mimic Clown alongside Freddy and Bonnie has to imply there's a special connection between the three. So why make the Mimic the awkward third wheel alongside this famous duo? Third well, wheel. <laughs> it turns out the rule of threes isn't just an important literary technique. It was also super important for performances at the circus, particularly when it comes to clowns. In a traditional okay. circus, you would have three major clown archetypes, the Auguste Clown, the White Face Clown, and the Contra Auguste Clown. We spoke about the Auguste Clown in our okay, previous so theory. One These clowns were the, the other. ones with red cheeks that were designed to appear silly and make children laugh. Often they were portrayed as an intelligent but lower class clown, the laborer, the one who would do a job, often badly, which led to them getting a pie in the face or falling off a ladder, you know, the typical yeah. slapstick stuff. The white face clowns, on the other hand, are supposed to be more serious and bossy. They were of okay. a higher status, and so they would be responsible for assigning the tasks to the Auguste clown and would often become frustrated at their failed results. Finally, you have the Contra Auguste clown, who was the middle ground. Still lower class than the white face clown, but not to the same degree as the Auguste clown. And looking into clown literature, which, yes, is a thing that I read, the Contra Auguste's role was to do one thing. Mimic the white face clown. No, I'm not making that up. It was right there on the page in front of me. What we now have are three distinct characters. A serious boss clown, a smart worker clown, and a mimicking clown. Now, look at who we have at the start of Freddy's. While we don't the know a lot about the specifics God of this sake. Fazbear Circus, we do I hate know this. one thing. Henry and William were actively performing during the early days of the franchise. One yeah. as a bear and one as a rabbit. Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie. Oh, William okay. was the businessman, the serious Is one. Is he going to say Edwin was, was, was the other clown? to make Fazbear a success, the white face clown. Then there's Henry, the intelligent laborer who was building the animatronics. Okay. The goose clown. True. And now we have a third, Paper Buddy, the mimic. A clown animatronic <laughs> that has been there since the early days of the franchise, now mimicking the past actions of the white face clown, William Afton, making this screenshot is so funny. In this trio. Uh, three clowns, three performers, three paper pals that have been there since the start. But sadly, choosing Afton to be the one to mimic wasn't the best decision. Okay. I'm going to stop there. Um, I understand what he's getting at. And it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, do I think that is what Scott had intended with the Paper Pals in FNAF 2? Absolutely not. Um, I don't think that Scott knows clown lore and I don't think... I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's hard, right? It's hard to piece together what maybe Scott was thinking with the Paper Pals, but I don't think he was thinking clowns until FNAF World. Um, and then I think that even that, like when he changed it to a red nose in FNAF World, I think that might have been like a teaser for Ennard almost. I, I think that... Um, because obviously Ennard, like, Ennard has a face. Ennard has a mask that we see in, like, the sister location primary control module. He has the mask, but the body of Ennard, the, like, the tangly wire stuff, that isn't Ennard's actual body. Like, that's not the body of that mask. The body of the mask could have been something else completely different that we'd, we'd just never seen before. Um, people theorize that it was Coils the Clown in, in the Fazbear Frights. Anyway, um... So we haven't seen Ennard's like actual body. And I'm thinking maybe, 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 and this, this could definitely be a stretch. Maybe the funky Tom that we see in Secret of the Mimic could be to do with Ennard, right? Maybe it, maybe that's how the clown fits in. And obviously we have all that clown imagery in Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator that kind of never really goes anywhere. You know what I mean? So I, I think maybe Ennard could be connected to this in some way. Um, bigger than this, but I, I don't know about like the um, Augustine clown or whatever it's called, Contra August. I don't know. It, it, it just seems a bit stretchy um, and it seems like we kind of have to go really far out of our way to do some research on clowns to understand FNAF lore, which I mean like it's, that's not the worst thing we've had to do for FNAF lore, but like 
it just seems a bit stretchy, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Let's continue. When this trailer was announced, Brian Freyermuth, the design director at Steel Wool, yes. tweeted about it saying, the evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. Is this that is Shakespeare? A Shakespeare's Julius yes. Caesar. My immediate reaction was, oh yeah, this is about Afton being dead. And now his evil lives on in the mimic who is now continuing to hurt and kill people beyond his death. Like we've been predicting this whole time. But as I've thought it over, I think it might be something more than that. I actually think that this line is telling us the main plot point that we will see in Secret of the Mimic. A plot point that will finally answer the question that has haunted me ever since the release of Help Wanted 2. What did Henry mean by a wound first inflicted on Yeah, Henry? especially this when Charlie line comes was from the insanity in last, Nap right? 6. Henry talks about how Afton used the souls of the children he'd killed to create Remnant and then continued to torture them to create the fun times. But the most important part of that monologue is when he turns inwards and begins reflecting on his own part in all of this. He ends up saying he needs to heal this wound, a wound first inflicted on me, one that I let bleed out. For the longest time, we believed this was referencing Afton killing his daughter, Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. She was Afton's first victim, which led on to the killing of all the missing children. That but was then the wound that was inflicted we, on Henry, the death of his own daughter, around. that then bled out to the death of so many others. But then Help Wanted 2 came out, and it flipped that entire idea on its head. In that game, Literally what I just said. <laughs> six gravestones in a specific order to receive the secret Bonnie yeah. mask. Each grave had a different poppet next to it, each referencing one of the six main animatronics. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, and the puppet. The five missing children and Charlie. However, Charlie isn't the first grave you light. She's actually the last one, heavily implying that Charlie was the so last complicated. to be killed. Honestly, yeah. I don't hate it from a lore standpoint. There's a decent amount of evidence that can line up with it. But by suggesting that, it threw into question that line of a wound first inflicted on me being about Charlie's death. Instead, there had to be an earlier incident that wounded Henry that would metaphorically bleed out. It's a, it's a good idea, children's yeah. children's incident yeah. and the death of Charlie. So, what do I think this event is? Well, it all comes back to that Shakespeare quote. The line that Brian tweeted is delivered by the character Mark Antony at Caesar's funeral. Caesar yeah. was murdered by the character Bruce. Brutus. However, Antony isn't able to directly accuse him publicly. So instead, he tactfully talks around the issue, calling Brutus an honorable man. This dynamic between Antony and Brutus, I suspect, is meant to be a reflection of Henry and Afton. Brutus was able to get close to Caesar because Caesar loved him, which is similar to the tactic used by Afton okay. throughout this series. Put on the Spring Bonnie costume, a character that the children loved, and use it to lure them into a back room room and kill them. For this quote to be used to promote the prequel game from 1979, it's telling us that Afton was abusing the love of this character way before the missing children's incident. And this early murder at the hands of Afton is what I believe we will be seeing in Secret of the Mimic. Maybe it will even be revealed as Afton's first. It's unclear if the Whoa. person Afton kills will be a major character like Caesar is in the play, or whether it's just another kid with the importance more being how early it is in the timeline. We only have a 40 second trailer after all. Much more is going to be revealed as time goes on. But what yeah. is important is if William is Brutus, Henry must be Antony. And that means he knew William committed the murder. That murder is going to I, be the wound inflicted yeah. on Henry. On the Fazbear business, I know, on absolutely their Henry, that Henry murder knows. could have destroyed everything 100%. they built. But as we know, it didn't. And Afton would go on to kill again. Because just like Antony, Henry is isn't going to accuse him directly. Maybe he was concerned for his business's survival. Maybe he was concerned about providing for his new daughter, Charlie. Yeah. Maybe he yeah. just wanted to believe his friend could change. But whatever his reasoning, despite the wound Afton caused him, he never came out and admitted what he knew. He just I believe allowed that entirely. to going, allowed Afton to keep killing. English philosopher John Stuart Mill once said, a person it's, it's may cause evil to it? others, not only by his actions, but by his inaction. And in either mm. case, 
he is justly accountable That's to them. That's a great quote. Injury. That is why he feels so guilty in the insanity. That is such a great because quote. Because he knows that his inaction in that moment from the surface yeah. led to the creation of not one, not two, but three monsters. William, the yellow There's rabbit literally a clown that poster, to kill like, so many on children. The, right of the clown that, that was designed well. to mimic Afton. Now carrying on his horrible legacy. And himself. The man who stood by and let the first murder happen. Leading to the deaths of so many others, including his own daughter. I guess, at the end of the day, they really were the perfect trio. But hey, I think we can all agree that we've got a lot to look forward to with FNAF. So many new games were demoed or teased during the anniversary. Yeah. Plus, we've still got a bunch of new books and a second movie coming, which means it's going to cost a, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot to keep yeah. up with this stuff. Thankfully, though, the sponsor of today's video, SoFi, okay. is here to help you out. They're offering one of you lucky theorists a chance to win $10,000. Wow. I don't care. <laughs> that was a very good video. What, here's, here's my, um, it's not an issue, really. I, I think I completely understand the theory and I believe you. I, I think that it's, it's accurate. I think going into Secret of the Mimic, that is a very good theory to have and something that could definitely be proven correct in the game. Do I like how he got there? I don't know. Like, I, I'm a little bit like, hmm, I, I'm a bit 50-50 on the method that we use to get the correct answer, if you know what I mean. Um, the three clowns thing is like, that's very, that's very stretchy. That's the most stretchy thing in this video, I think, is um, like the, the whole like, clowns come in threes thing. There's one white face and then... I keep forgetting the name, like Augustine or something, Eugene, <laughs> I don't know. But I, I think the three clowns thing is a little bit weird to bring up, but um, like it's fair enough. Uh, I, I understand why you would use that. And then the Julius Caesar thing, um, fine. Or was it Julius Caesar? Um, yeah, it, it would have been. Um, but like the whole Brutus thing and like the di different, the William Afton having those roles, like I, it, it it makes sense. It's just like a little bit like, how did we get from here to here? You know, like, I don't know. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. It's just, um, I would like to see more evidence come from, come from that. But I, I think it works. I think it works. There's nothing in my mind contradicting any of this. So it, it fits, I think. Um, anyway, if you guys have any thoughts on this or if you have any thing against or for this theory, then make sure you let me know in the comments below and we can have a little conversation, a little discussion about this video. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.